This is Tristan with Victorus Games. Hello, and welcome back to our series on how to make a game using the GDevelop open source game engine. In the last video, we made our camera follow our player across the level. In this video, we're going to show you how to detect collisions between objects and perform actions when those collisions are happening. Before I get started, I want to say thanks for all the support for this channel. Your support really encourages me to keep making videos, and I have set a goal to make one video a week in 2022. I don't think that will be easy to do, but I think it will be possible, so I'm going to give it a shot. Okay, back to the game. So what do I mean by the word collision? In the real world, you could imagine two objects colliding with each other and then bouncing off. However, in GDevelop, the word collision really refers to a condition that detects when two objects are touching or overlapping. The part about the objects bouncing apart from each other will depend on the logic that you want in your game. In this game, our obstacles do bounce off each other because we have added the physics behavior to them. But in many cases, you will simply just want to check if the two objects are touching. To show this, I'm going to perform some actions when the player is not on the ground object. So when the player moves off like this, we want to perform some actions that encourage the player to get back on the road so they can continue playing the game. Okay, let's clean this up a little bit. I'm going to delete the camera event we don't use anymore. I'll collapse the camera movement, player movement, and initialize game. And let's create a new event group. So we want to detect when the player is not in collision or not touching the ground object. So let's add a condition and we're going to choose the player. And the first thing we see is a lot of physics behavior conditions. Like this collision here only works when you have two objects with the physics behavior. And our ground object does not use physics. So we don't want this collision. Let's just type collision. You can see there is the physics collision, and this is the normal collision that applies to all objects based off their collision mask. The collision mask is also often called a hitbox, and the collision mask by default is the same size as the sprite. The collision mask can be edited, but we don't need to do that in this game. So we'll choose collision, and we want to know when the player is in collision with the ground. We can use this invert condition option to find out when they are not in collision. The red icon indicates that it is inverting this logic. So player is in collision with the ground inverted basically means the player is not in collision with the ground. We could do something like changing the background of the game. So if we change the background color, I'll pick a, a yellow like an alarm. Of course, we'll want to do the opposite. So let's control C, control V. So we made a copy of that event. The second event's gonna be to reset the background color. And so we want to detect when it is in collision with the ground. If you right click on the condition, you can actually quickly change that invert. So now this is the not, not in collision and this is in collision. So we're gonna set the background color back to the starting color. Okay, let's test if the collision and the background colors are working. Okay, good. So we can leave and come back either side. So our collision events are working. Let's give the player more reasons to get back on the ground. Let's make them go slow when they are not in collision. So we're going to make them go slow by increasing the player's linear damping. This is what we used earlier to prevent our player from sliding around too much. So this will greatly reduce their speed. Let's see what our linear damping is currently. Click on the object, click on behaviors, and we're under the physics behavior. We currently have it to 0.5, so we're going to increase that using the event. So we will change our linear damping to twice the normal value. And of course we need to reset it to the previous value. Alright, let's test how much this slows the player down. Um, it actually is not enough. We want him to go much slower. Let's set it to four times the damping. I'm going to increase our forward force a little bit. It seems slow. Let's make it actually double it. I'm going to need some more objects to see what's happening. I'm just throwing these on here for now so we can see our movement. But in the next video, we will actually be placing these using a few different methods. Okay, let's try driving on this now. This is the speed when we're off, and then when we get on it, it goes faster and slower. I might even make the penalty more obvious. 
Let's increase the linear damping. Let's make it even three. Let's try again. Okay, this is on the road, off the road. You're going real slow. You wanna get back on. Yeah, that's what I like. One last thing we can do to provide feedback to the user is to play a sound. So let's add an action. If we type in sound, I'm going to choose play a sound on a channel. You can choose a sound effect that you bring from outside GDevelop. However, GDevelop has a really nifty tool to create some basic sound effects. So instead of selecting a file, you can click create. It says create, edit a sound with JFXer. This is a free tool included in GDevelop to create sound effects. It's pretty neat. If you just hit random, it'll create a random sound. However, it also has a few templates that help create sounds. Let's try the coin. That was a cool laser. Explosion. Power up. Hit. Jump. And uh, blip select. Every time I click this, it's actually creating random values and you can actually go back into what was played in this history. So I wanna find a sound that is like an alarm to indicate the user needs to get back on the ground object. So let me try creating more random ones and see if I can find one that sounds good. Okay, I like this one. You can hit the play button if you wanna hear the sound effect multiple times. I like that. We'll give it a name. Hit save. And for the channel, I'll just pick one. Can I repeat the sound? No. Uh, volume is 100 by default. I like this. set everything to 50, so you have room to raise or lower the volume of each sound. And pitch speed of one, let's just leave it like that for now. So now when the player is in collision with the ground, it will also play the sound. Now there is a problem with this logic and I'll show it to you when we play this. That is not the sound we want. That was basically restarting that sound 60 times a second. So how can we fix that? Let's create a sub event and we're gonna add the trigger once condition. We'll move our ground alarm here. So now it will play the ground alarm only one time. Let's try that. There, I played it once. It's a nice Star Trek sound. Let's see if we can make a repeat so that it keeps playing while the player is out here in no man's land. So instead of doing a trigger once, let's add a condition. We'll basically check if the sound is currently being played. So we needed to specify a channel for this condition. That's why we use the play sound on a channel. We hit OK. Is the sound on channel one being played? And we actually want to invert that. So when the sound on channel one is not being played, then play the ground alarm sound. Let's try it. Very cool. I do want to add one more sound effect while we're on the topic of collisions. Let's make a sound when the player hits an obstacle. All right, we'll create a new event group. Create an event. This is very similar to what we did before, but in this case, we are going to use a physics collision. So when the player is colliding with the obstacle. We're gonna play a sound as well. Let's add action, sound, and I'm just gonna choose the play a sound because we're not gonna need to use a condition with it. Let's create another sound in JFXer. I think a hit sound would be what we need for this. Okay, this is an okay sound. It's kind of like a wooden hit. Give it a name and save it. Choose our volume of 50 again, pitch speed of one. And we will want to do a trigger once. 
Otherwise, it'll be restarting the sound every frame. Let's test it now. Okay, it's not the best sound, but it does give some feedback that you hit something. That's all for this video. In the next video, we will show you how to build a complete level by placing obstacles, including a very simple automated way to do it using procedural generation. Make sure to subscribe so you won't miss any videos. If you want to see what other things I'm working on, you can follow me on Twitter at Victorus Games, and you're also welcome to come visit our Discord server. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.